and welcome to Beef Week 2012. My name is Amy Smith. <laughs> is that it? <laughs> the locally owned business, running out white food, maybe. Great to have them up and, um, you know, they love, they love the invitation from Beef Week, Newcastle. It's always great to have them back. Big question, Thomas, will they be piping the night on the I'd like to know. I'd like to know. The night's all right. The night's all right. The lovely lady at the front of the station head up and down. She's been playing big. Well, the story of New Italy started in the 1870s in Italy around Venice. Um, that area had a lot of political turmoil and the people of that region wanted a better life. The soil was poor and they often had difficulty feeding their families, so they wanted a better life. The Marquis de Ray, whose family had lost a lot of wealth during the French Revolution, he had an idea of colonisation. So he originally applied for land in New Caledonia and that was refused. But later on he came up with this idea of sending immigrants to these areas to help settle. And so 50 families from the Venetian area um, departed Barcelona in the end after they got permission to finally leave from the various governments. 317 people left on the 9th of July 1880 to head to this newfound land of wealth and prosperity. They were dropped off on a ship in the Richmond River and they tracked the six miles through the bush through to the area that we now know as New Italy. They set up a colony here with the various families. They did it very hard in the early years because they had no income. They had to wait for crops to be grown. They had sheep, they had um, various forms of vegetables. Um, there was even some coal mining up in the upper reaches out towards Moonham. But the soil here is very, very poor and uh, in wet weather it becomes very cloggy and so it's not ideal to grow any crop at all. Okay, Forest Glen um, is a, a primarily a tea tree farm. Uh, it has a, a, it's got its organic certification so uh, we've taken that a little bit beyond the tea tree and uh, we've started more recently, last two or three years, we've started to try and develop a, um, a vegetable uh, production uh, up the backyard and we have some uh, hothouses up there which were originally used for the propagation of the tea trees and they lend themselves beautifully to, uh, to growing vegetables. So. One of the things we're trying to do at the minute is to, um, is to grow vegetables for our own use and also that we can sell at the markets or to, um, to restaurants. And um, yeah, With our tea tree farming, we've had mixed success with that. Uh, it's a one-man operation which allows me to do it without any help. Although we do employ uh, people who are volunteers to, to help us prepare the fields before I start harvesting. Uh, so that's Pretty much for every hour I spend harvesting, somebody has to spend an hour preparing ahead, ahead of me by removing grass 
and things like that. Um, but it's a really a, 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 an opportunity thing which is governed by the weather. So when the weather doesn't want me to harvest, I can't harvest. And it's been now since September 2010 since I've been able to harvest. So that's at this stage, that's 21 months or thereabouts since I've been able to harvest. And I still cannot see when I'm going to be able to harvest next. So, um, so it's a feature of the Bunga Walbans. You know, the, the water comes and then the water goes. And presently the water is here. And uh, so it's it's been... Um, uh, you know, be, being a bit of a barrier to us harvesting the tea tree, but because we're not spending time there, I've been able to spend more time over on the vegetable side of things, and uh, as a consequence, uh, wanting to improve my ability to grow and understand how to grow things better. Last year I undertook a course which was about soil management, and it was a great thing to do because um, more than just teach me about growing plants, it really gave me an insight into how the soil actually works and it was something I didn't really fully understand before and for plants to grow you have to have life in the soil so the course taught us how to actually put life in the soil it was more about that than growing plants per se so now I quite understand that if you don't have life in the soil then you're not going to get um, the, the plants that you want so you know, it's, it's, it's driven home again the need for us to look after this place, you know, the, the, the planet and, the, and, the, and the, you know, the ground we walk on even. Uh, it, it really has to be nurtured and looked after. My uh, grandfather set up a sawmill out at Moonham and uh, he ran that for quite a while. But on the day World War I ended, which was also his eldest son's 16th birthday, the barge that he used to carry the timber across Bungawalbum Creek blew up. So he uh, handed the sawmill over to his older brother and he then moved out to Evans Head and did carpentry and set up the first business. But unfortunately the people of New Italy have left the area now and, but we still have the museum which retains the history. Um, new families have come into the area but the settlement that we knew a hundred years ago with a school and a wine shop and the church have all gone.